big news coming out from the United States. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, she's the first woman tapped by President-elect Donald Trump for a position in the White House. Trump has offered Nikki Haley the role of ambassador to the United Nations, where she would replace Samantha Power. Now, Power has served as uh, President Obama's UN ambassador since 2013. Nikki Haley's appointment would make her the first Indian woman to serve in the White House and the first non-white at a cabinet-level position. Haley is the second Asian-American governor. The U.S. Senate will still have to confirm her position, though. Haley campaigned for Florida Senator Marco Rubio as well, and then later Texas Senator Ted Cruz during this election season. Now, while she was critical of Trump's policies earlier on, Haley did meet with the president-elect last week in New York at Trump Tower. Nikki Haley says that she was earlier dubbed to take on the role of Secretary of State. So to get more on this story, we're now joined by Manu Bhagwan. He is a professor of history and human rights at the City University of New York. Manu, thank you so much for joining us. Quite a historic move, the first Indian American at a White House position and the uh, first woman, especially coming from uh, Trump's cabinet. Uh, what do we make of this uh, quite a symbolic move? Uh, right. Well, thank you for having me, uh, Archit. Um, uh, and nice to be with all of you. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure uh, we know exactly what to make of it just yet. Uh, as you said in your opening, uh, Haley has been a strong critic of Trump throughout the election season. Um, there are parallel signals that he's still in talks with Mitt Romney uh, to serve as Secretary of State. So it's possible that he may be assembling uh, a loose version of a team of rivals for his cabinet, um, incorporating critics. Uh, there was some stories that he was in discussions with a Bernie Sanders supporter named Tulsi Gabbard, uh, who's a Democrat as well. So I, I, that might be what is going on. Um, in the press release for her, uh, he said uh, he praised her ability to make to 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 make deals. Um, uh, and, and sort of signaling that what he's really interested in is sort of taking hardline positions initially and then making compromises. Uh, so um, in short, I'm not sure exactly what to make of it. It's certainly um, uh, as, a, as a person of color, uh, as a woman, uh, it sends a, a relatively positive signal given um, some of the heated rhetoric from the, from the past year. Um, and in as much as some strong Trump supporters, like uh, for instance, commentator Ann Coulter, uh, have really gone all in on heavy racist rhetoric, and, and, and Ann Coulter in particular was harsh on Nikki Haley. To the extent that he's gone ahead and picked her anyway, uh, he, he's sort of poking people like Ann Coulter in the eye, I suppose. Uh, but, but how this all plays out is yet to be seen. All right, uh, valid point there. Uh, uh, Professor Bhagwan, this is Sana from the We On Studio. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Uh, let me also ask you, do you think it's going to, uh, you know, augur well for India-U.S. relations, considering what, what Trump has been saying, uh, you know, when he mentions India every time during his campaign? Do you think this could augur well for India in the time to come then if Nikki Haley gets that uh, post or, you know, shows his intent that he's ready to appoint an Indian American into, you know, these kind of ranks? Um, I, I don't think we can read anything into it uh, of that nature. I mean, I, I think there's a gap between an, an identity and, and, a, and a policy or a national outlook. Um, uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, there were some groups of Indian Americans who supported him. There were others who opposed him. Um, I, I don't know that um, I don't know that there's something specific uh, along these lines uh, to say. Um, N Nikki Haley is someone who has uh, embraced uh, uh, particularly a, an American identity, obviously, but without necessarily totally losing her her uh, some of her diverse roots. Uh, so I, I, again, I'm sorry to say, but I think we just have to wait and see. I, I'm not I'm not sure in particular what it means. Uh, I would just add, however. Nikki Haley does not have a lot of foreign policy experience. Um, she's gone on a few trade missions for her state. Uh, but other than that, um, uh, what she aims to do or, or, or what her knowledge base is, is either unclear or, or um, deficient. So that means, I think, one of two things. One, that the uh, bureaucracy uh, right. is going to play a, a much stronger role. And in that sense, it's good. Um, you know, a lot of experts will wield influence, uh, will will give her uh, their assessments, and she will make some kind of judgment uh, and, and move forward. Or it could also mean uh, that Trump himself will play a larger than expected role in foreign policy, 
uh, uh, you know, um, sort of sort of leaning in on on uh, what should be done. Uh, on the other hand, there's a third option, which is she may surprise us completely and um, um, really take the reins and 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 marshal things uh, moving forward. Oh, yes. The UN ambassador. The, sorry, one last point. Uh, the UN ambassador's position is is important. But it is it is uh, a lot less important than, say, Secretary of State. So we still have to see how that fills out to really know where this is going. True. All right, Manu, thank you so much for joining us, providing us that perspective from New York. So quite an interesting move there, Sana, you know, to have the first Indian American uh, possibly in the White House. Uh, quite a... Uh, That's right. Uh, if not Secretary of State, but then U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. We'll keep a very close eye on that developing story. But 